And look at her Gertrude Stein. You know, why would anybody want to do a film on Gertrude Stein again unless there's some new information about her that nobody ever heard about before? I mean, she captured the woman, she captured the time, she captured the people around her, she captured her work. When I've shown the film fairly often to film classes and to museums and stuff, and you very often get the question, uh, uh, Mr. Duff, did you always want to do a film on Gertrude Stein? And the answer is, uh, no, I really, I really did not want to do a film on Gertrude Stein. I did not have the idea of doing a film on Gertrude Stein. I wanted to do a film about Paris. And I went to, it was Kurt Davis, and I told him he had a program called Festival at that time. And um, I said, I would like to do a film. I wanted to do this for years. As a matter of fact, I had tried when I was at CBS to get somebody interested in doing a film, uh, and nobody was interested. And, um, um, and, and Kurt said, um, he said, Perry, you know, it's, it's an interesting idea, but it's too broad. I mean, it's really much, much too broad. Can't you find one person whose life and whose work uh, encompass that period? Well, of course, it had to be Gertrude Stein. I mean, who else? Who else? You know, was it going to be? I would like to say uh, something about the way I started the film. I felt that it was very important to to make the statement, without, of course, making it as a statement, that Gertrude Stein was not just some esoteric person that lived in the first part of the 20th century and and um, that she was very current, and that people were really very interested. And at that very moment, uh, and he had done been doing this uh, for a while, uh, there was a man called Al Carmines, who was a composer and a pianist. And he, he was doing a show called Gertrude Stein in Circles. And he had a wonderful, he had a wonderful cast, and he did it then on a kind of a, a stepped, set, and it was wonderful. It was very punchy, it was very strong, it was very lively, and uh, it was Gertrude Stein, uh, her words, but set to music in a particular way, and, and, um, and it was funny. And I loved the fact that, uh, uh, that so much of Goethe, and maybe it's one of the reasons that, it's my, that it really is my, still my favorite of my film, because it really is, is it's so entertaining, it's so much fun. The first film that I saw of Perry's that I must show my students, I th felt, was one about Gertrude Stein, because it was, uh, was funny. And uh, uh, I had a series of filmmakers come to my class and uh, doing such heavy subjects as uh, civil rights and uh, all of that kind of thing. And uh, so uh, I knew by the, the fourth or fifth class they were going to be delighted to have a film that had a sense of humor. And Perry certainly had that. I think that in, in, approaching, in approaching a film in general, I think that the style of the film has to come out of the style uh, uh, of the work and the personality and the life story uh, uh, of the artist. Fortunately, she had written her story. She had written the autobiography of Alice B. Toklas so that she gave us the base of the script. And for years, I never used a, a, a narrator. I have always been against narration, and uh, with Gertrude Stein, we used this wonderful actress. I knew her work already and knew that her voice would be right. And then uh, I knew who I wanted to, to do um, uh, Alice B. Toklas. And so that you had basically, basically certain voices. And then, um, uh, and then I broke down the story into the individuals who knew Gertrude in certain periods. And so that, uh, uh, I knew that Virgil Thompson was going to be essential. 
And so this is me looking, looking worried as usual. <laughs> and um, Virgil in control. I have the feeling that Virgil never had a moment of self-doubt in his life. He just knew who he was and what he was doing. But I think that's true of, uh, of artists in general, and certainly the, uh, the ones that I've done uh, bi biographies. Virgil Thompson became great friends with Gertrude Stein, and uh, they decided that they were going to do an opera together. He, he is playing in this, he's playing a part of Four Saints in Three Acts. This is, while we're shooting, this is from her one of her early books that she had such a hard time getting published in the film. There's a, a, a point made of her rejection let letters. And um, Melanctha is one of the stories, one of the great stories in it. And uh, this is Roxy Roker. And this is me thinking, thinking deeply. And that was really the first time that I had worked with actors. And, um, uh, and it seemed to have gone, it seemed to have gone well. Pierre Balmain talks about making clothes for her when they were supposed to be hiding during the war and made, uh, she insisted on, um, on these really very, very loud blaring colors and to be cut in a certain way when she was supposed to be hiding there. It has always been, and it is uh, very important to me and I'm sure to other filmmakers, the editing is really where the film happens. Obviously, uh, you can't cut what you haven't shot, but let's say that the, um, you come back with an enormous amount of material that, that you've shot, whether they're stills or whether they're, it's, it's live shooting or interviews, and the choices that you make in the editing room is what really makes or breaks the film. And the rhythm of the editing is so important. I mean, for example, uh, in the Gertrude Stein, there are uh, very, uh, um, very kind of uh, uh, poetic and um, uh, very slow sequences, and then, and then cut to something which is, you know, um, not staccato, but a completely, a completely different rhythm, which is what makes the film so interesting because, because um, it, it changes. Uh, 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 from one sequence to another, there is a tremendous difference in 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 the rhythm of the editing. I guess is really, uh, and uh, but you know it's it's really difficult to but, talk about actually you know the making of a film. In her uh, her book, The Making of Americans, she says it was the story of everyone who ever lived, whoever, whoever, whoever had lived. When she, when she talks about repeating, uh, I, oh, I, I repeat and I love it, I love it and I say it, and I will really just, just keep repeating. And we did uh, uh, photographs, some were of her family and just some of different period peop, uh, people and uh, uh, dissolving from one, from one to the other. And, and with um, superimposition so that you had the feeling of the repetition, uh, vi visual, visual, visual repetition. The great thing about her is that she doesn't second guess herself. Once she sees what it is that she wants and she knows what it is that she wants, once she sees it, that's it, we're done. It's considered a kind of a landmark film because it was the first time that somebody had used to do a, f a full-length documentary um, uh, of that level, um, that quality, I guess, uh, a biography, um, using stills in the way that I the way that I did in Gertrude Stein. A number of filmmakers have been very gracious about it, and um, um, and Ken Burns. Uh, and his, uh, his first wife, Amy, who I didn't realize was co-producer of his early films. She even wrote it in a letter. And she was saying they were in college. She and Burns were in college together. 
and they saw the Gertrude Stein. And she said, we were so excited that we saw it, we looked at it dozens of times and we analyzed it and, and you know, broke down the, the shots and the sequences. And they said, this is the kind of film we want to make. This is what we want to do. We want to make films, you know, this kind of film, biographical film. And of all the films that I've made, uh, when I'm trying to get somebody interested, somebody difficult and somebody very important to, to be in my film, to interview them, the thing that seemed to do it in most cases is, oh, did you do the Gertrude Stein? Oh, I'd love to see, I'd love to have a copy or, you know. She used her understanding of what the artists were all about and wanted the audience to understand from his or her work what the artist was. And uh, <clears throat> she did that, uh, first of all, by showing things that would un uh, unexpected things as far as uh, my students were concerned. They didn't expect uh, a documentary would be funny. You know, it was serious, uh, world-shaking, but uh, what was it? And she introduced uh, the idea that uh, documentary could be uh, not only real life, but uh, lively life. What is the filmmaker's first responsibility to the audience? The first responsibility is not to bore the audience. Because if you bore your audience, you have lost them, and you haven't got an audience to bore anymore. 